Once community animal health workers have been trained, they are ready to start providing animal health services in the community. Too many projects, however, believe that training alone is the key to a truly effective CAHW system. Monitoring and assessment are also vital components of a successful project and should be part of the plan right from the beginning. Essentially, if you, if you don't monitor your project, then you don't know where you're going. Uh, and sometimes it's easy to forget that you may seem very busy, but are you actually moving forward? So we, we feel it's vital that every project at the start should, should lay out how it's going to monitor and set those milestones which it's aiming for. Through monitoring you identify what you have done good, what you have not done good. Which means you feed back that into replanning process. You have to improve your work from time to time. So if you want to prove, improve the next year's work, you have to look into the past year's achievement. And the only way to look into the past year's achievement is when you have appropriate monitoring system. In Mulu, Ethiopia, monitoring of the CAHWs began as soon as they had finished their training. Every month, a supervisor, in this case an assistant vet, visits each CAHW to find out how their work is going and to gather information. First, I have a case book. I write the date, number, the owner, the name, the address, and I will also take the history of the animal and make a tentative diagnosis. After knowing the disease, I would give the order of the drugs and the dosage. Finally, after filling this in for one month, I would transfer the information according to the reporting format. It's not only um, collecting information, but he will stay with them. He will see how they are performing. Bukai oxy titrisiklin iyan kudwin. Yusuf Musa wahanka dwin na wasna wa karaba. A place to correct and show them, and then to discuss with them if there are some new problems in that environment. They will report to the supervisor, and he will clarify and he will teach again. In Pokot, Kenya. A similar system of gathering information is used. For the many CAHWs who are illiterate, the pictorial reporting forms are easy to use and give enough data on diseases and their treatment to be very useful. This form is meant for me to know how many animals I've treated or how many animals I've sprayed because I note down the ones I've treated. If we treat more animals, then the records will show that there is a lot of diseases in this particular area, so that will mean we'll need a lot of drugs. The information gathered in the field is taken by the supervisor to the vet. Not only will the vet give advice for the CAHWs on practical matters that arise each month, he will also collate the information brought to him and pass it on to important stakeholders. No deaths, no trips. Yeah. The information that we gather when we are monitoring is used one by ourselves, myself and now as the private vet, the ATs, and even the animal health workers. This we used for, for the benefit of improving our service. We also pass this information to the government and these ones also help in maybe regulation, in, in advice, and that kind of thing. We also pass this information to our partner NGOs who are stakeholders in this project. And these ones uh, help them also to see where they can intervene and assist in improving what we are doing. In Ethiopia, a refresher course 18 months after the initial training provides the CAHWs with a good opportunity to evaluate how they think they've been doing and talk about the kinds of services they have been providing.
Some of you will explain how you feel about being CAHWs. What made you very happy? How you communicate with the community? I'll need one person to explain this to us. Since I graduated from this course, so many people have been following me saying, where is Ahmed? This is one thing that's made me very happy because of the trust they developed in the service I provide. There are some diseases for which we haven't got drugs. Others, which we also need additional technical training. We request that you people also teach us additional techniques. The Ethiopian project is also trying to gauge the CAHW's perceptions of what treatments they spend most of their time administering. Participatory techniques are used to get the information. The type of question uh, is asking is what proportion of the time is given for different uh, activities, such as uh, vaccination, injection for infectious disease, deworming, spraying, and wound treatment. The community animal health workers are explaining and showing in proportion using uh, the local material such as stones. So for planning purpose, for the future planning, uh, in terms of drug replenishment, uh, in terms of drug purchase from outside, that information is very helpful for him. But it's not just the technical aspect of a CAHW's work that needs monitoring. This man is working as ordered even better. He doesn't stay in his house during the night. He crosses rivers, goes beyond mountains. Many animals that used to die, he saved. You know, uh, the community animal health system largely relies on social relationship with the community. These are social indicators where the community uh, sit together and, and evaluate, you know, uh, his conduct, whether he's active, whether he's keen to help his community efficiently, whether he's charging more money, and whether the um, community is satisfied. You can't actually measure with the satisfaction, but you can, you can ask them and they'll tell you. And that we call social monitoring. We follow the service and the person. When the drugs come, they call us and we follow them and see what items they receive and what payment they make. We also advise the community to use these drugs and not black market drugs, so we follow the whole process, especially the drugs he receives and the money he repays. That's how we follow him. Each CAHW has got his own elder, so I have got him as a contact. Even when I go out for work, I will tell him the place that I am going to. People are coming from different directions, so whenever I am asked, I will report to the order where I am going. It is also important to include the community in evaluation and to share the results of evaluation with them. Sometimes we design our reports having only one user in mind, normally the donor. But we forget these people. So in the end, the sustainability aspect fails. Because they are not included, they do not get the results of the evaluation. They even don't know how the evaluation was conducted. It's difficult for them to continue from there. But if they were involved in the participatory evaluation, by them also defining the indicators of the success of the program, you know, it, they would really be very active because they know exactly what they are talking about, it is on their fingertips. And actually that will enhance sustainability. Monitoring and assessment of a project should be happening on an ongoing basis. Additionally, at some point, the project will want to discover what kind of an impact it's having on the community it's serving. In impact, you're basically looking at the results of your work. Um, 
you're looking at the end of the day of how y you've affected people's lives, um, whether they really have more food to eat, whether they're, they're wealthier and, and things like that. So it's a much broader um, thing, impact assessment, and, and a lot more difficult to do, of course. The way we do it for the livestock sector is essentially to ask livestock owners. Um, livestock owners, of course, can tell you very quickly whether their animals are healthier and how that has affected their lives in terms of whether they're getting a few more milliliters of milk from their cows each day, a few more eggs and things like that. And if you interview enough people, you can assess the impact of your work. We drink milk, eat good meat, we draw the blood, and the blood is disease-free. When we met the animals, the bulls don't have a problem. They met well. And when the calves are born, they are healthy. Long ago, when there were lots of diseases, when a cow calved, you found the cows were very small and weak. So these days, they are healthier. People are now talking about milk increment. Uh, because some of these are treated or controlled very well by this community animal workers, such as external parasitism, internal parasitism, and also uh, the more killer diseases such as black leg and anthrax. The number of calves, now what they, they observe is the number of calves is increasing. These people depend on animals, and because of that, the saved animals they can sell are an asset which bring good money and they get enough milk so all their lives are linked to animals and this change brings an improvement when the CAHWs treat animals we get more milk when they save animals that used to die they are our asset and we get more cash the effects are too vast to mention the positive result of an impact assessment will be an invaluable tool to convince policymakers of the worth of CAHW projects. You bring this and feedback to the policy things. Okay, these guys have done ABCD, which has improved the livelihood of the pastoralists, the community they are serving. So we have to change our policies to accommodate them in the service delivery system. Before these people were trained, I can say we used to lose all our animals at the times of disease outbreak. Most of the ones that became sick used to die. But now we are better because they are here. And we ask you to give us some more community animal health workers. Why is it important to monitor CAHW projects? What methods might be used to evaluate a project? How do you measure the impact of a project? In a hotel near Lake Bogoria in Kenya, a group from the country's veterinary world have gathered for a conference on animal health. They include members of the government veterinary services, NGO employees and academics. And then another meeting was held of the peers. peers here. It's an ideal environment for discussion, sharing ideas and influencing policy. A standardized training curriculum has been developed. Making some last-minute adjustments to his presentation is Dr. Benson Ririmpoi, a private vet working in a community-based animal health project in the northwest of Kenya. He will share his experiences with the rest of the conference and hopes that they will influence the policymakers there. It's a very useful place for us to be able to convince people because Many stakeholders are here. We have government officials, we have uh, several NGOs, we have people from private sector. And I think this is the right place to be able to talk these things and be able to convince people of uh, the viability and the appropriateness of this particular approach. The project background, uh, PACVAC, 
then, together with the Department of Veterinary uh, Services. Influencing policy, trying to convince members of the veterinary establishment of the value of community-based animal health and to support it through legislation is an important part of ensuring the success of a project and others in the country. It's uh, vital for the long-term sustainability of, of these projects. Um, if you think about the situation in, in many countries at the moment, you have successful projects at community level which have brought services to livestock owners. But if that's not recognised at policy levels, then that success can only expand so far. At some point, um, the decision makers in any country have to say, this is something that is good for this sector of the community and we endorse it and we think it should be regulated in this or that way. And, and at the end of the day, if there's a policy which, which does that, you can then move on to legalising. If the government is against you, then you can't go very far. You're going to have very temporary structures which, are, and, and, uh, which cannot uh, justify expenditure of so much money and efforts. So you must remove this constraint and also give people a climate where they feel free and not threatened. Despite a history of conflicting with the veterinary authorities, CAH projects in Kenya are now widely accepted and supported by the government and the Kenya Veterinary Board. The Kenya Veterinary Association, however, still has many reservations and chose not to send a delegate to the conference. We have some officials of the Kenya Veterinary Association who believe that uh, community animal health uh, workers, if they are brought into the policy issue, they might overtake the veterinarians. They see them as a risk. But uh, this is not the case. And because of that, they are still very, very negative towards community animal health workers. They are not for them. But this, according to me, is a, is a small group. And I think for most of them, they've not had the pastoralist experiences. So they really need to come into these workshops to share experiences and know. Private sector. And in Uganda, the situation is even worse. Community animal health has no legal standing at all in the country. Dr. Ojala is at the conference to find out what he can do to change this. The effect this is having on us is, um, you know, delivering a service in suspicion, in fear, because of legal, legal actions being taken against us, the veterinarians who are actually in such projects. We fear to be interdicted from the board because we are licensed. So that one is one of the greatest challenges that we have. So who are the policy makers that need to be influenced and how can it be done? One country that now has a very widespread platform of support for community-based animal health is Ethiopia. Dr. Baranu Admasu, a practitioner of community animal health, has lobbied the policy makers for many years. But today I'm here uh, just to know the progress of this, uh, I mean, my guideline prepared by last, last time. 